Hello all. Try and find a no wind area. We're back in our fog season, which is almost all year round now, except for winter when we have our summer. So with that, I wanted to show you a comment left on last video. I wanted to comment on that and um, it's a big subject Yellowstone he says that the USGS can't be trusted and that they're directly connected with the government well yeah they are they're part of government and my my opinion is not all government is bad I think the scientific community and the weather community are really good and I also think that the VA is really good and um, so I'm, I'm not completely against government. In fact, I'm actually for government. I'm just not for the U.S., the United Kingdom's government with the Queen and all that. I, I just, I think there's so many corrupt governments that people tend to think that just plain government is wrong. Government is absolutely right if it's honest. It has to be honest. I mean, you get, you get roads that you pay hardly anything for because everybody pays for it together. You know, it's called socialism. Uh, we get free sewers, we get water lines put in, we get bridges built, we get uh, infrastructure for cities and homes put in, and, and you hardly pay anything because we all pay for it as a group. And that's what socialism really is about. It's, it's about the group and how we get a discount because every, there's so many people using it and so many people paying for it that instead of you paying $10,000 a year for the roads, you pay, you know, $100, $200 a year for the roads. So there are a lot of advantages to having a government versus having a fascism where the government, I mean, where the corporation rules. And um, we've seen what fascism does, you know, in the 1940s. We saw a really good example of fascism. When the corporation is put in charge, you're in trouble. You really are in trouble because everything is about the dollar. That's the way the corporation was set up, is around the dollar. There is nowhere in the corporation where it says that you have to look out for the people and make sure that you don't pollute and you don't uh, rip people off and um, start fracking wherever you want because the government gave you, the corporation, the permission to frack and use any kind of chemicals in the ground or anything. So government has a lot to play and, and it, it is a good thing, but in the year 2014, there's hardly any good governments. If you guys know of any, let me know. Uh, you know, because I don't really follow every government, but the ones I do follow certainly aren't, uh, boy, they're, they're definitely the worst we've ever seen, I think. This thing with Putin and Obama and Kerry, and, and uh, it, it's just absolutely insane. We both have nuclear weapons. How can you, if you start a war, you have to end it with nuclear weapons. There's no other way. So, it, again, the military-industrial complex is the corporation. However, the government is going along with it. So it's not so black and white as I can't stand the government. Now, as far as Yellowstone goes, the USGS is the only one doing any studies in the park, and they're very detailed. It's very hard to corrupt a scientist. It, it, it takes a lot of looking, and in many cases, you just have to bring them up from very young, bring them up to the system, and then put them on the payroll as soon as they're old enough so that they grow up uh, learning whatever the corporation wants is what you say is the information. I decided to um, look into the Yellowstone Buffalo and story again. So I went and restudied everything and I still find the same information. It hasn't changed. I, uh, as far as what is going on with the buffalo. Well, here's a story that I found and this is the closest thing I can come up with. What happened was that last year the Parks Department put up a large fence across a valley. This valley happened to be the very valley that a lot of buffalo and other animals would migrate down into the valleys and then back up into the mountains during the summer. So what happened is that they put this fence right across that migration route. So the buffalo 
instinctively had to get past that barrier because that's what their instincts tell them to do. It's, it's wired into them. They found a way around the, the fence and went past the fence several miles. So what the park department did was they brought in helicopters and chased the buffalo and other animals back into the park with helicopters. And it went on for weeks trying to get all these animals back over into the park. You know, that isn't going to work either because the buffalo have to get down to their grazing area during the winter. And with this fence in the way, what are they going to eat? You know that Yellowstone's a very harsh place and that you have to get you have to get the food that you need to get through the cold times and the deep snow when you can't eat anything at all. And they've just blocked off their access point to this area. So apparently what we saw in the video were buffalo running back into the park with helicopters following them. Okay, let's talk about the earthquakes in Yellowstone. I happen to follow along what's going on with the earthquakes. And I think one of the reasons you're not, you're thinking that they're uh, holding back information about earthquakes is because you're not looking in the right place. They measure earthquakes in Yellowstone a little differently because there's so many of them. And um, let me show you. So I, I follow Mary's uh, video blog and she talks about the earthquakes a lot there in Yellowstone and shows you that graph, which is a USGS graph. It's just that when you have so many earthquakes, if you just show them as dots, you'll just have dots on top of dots and an endless list down on the left side. So what they do is they, they change it to a drum view. which uh, allows you to see all the, the uh, earthquakes in detail and the, you can tell which ones are big and smaller and all that. And she goes into it in her report on a daily basis. So I would really suggest you go down in the description and click on her, her video link and uh, subscribe to her because she is very good at following all the stories about Yellowstone in detail. And uh, so hopefully that explains that a little bit more. When you only have one scientific group studying uh, Yellowstone, that's pretty much all the information you're going to get. And you have to take it for whatever it's worth. And hopefully uh, you can do something. But really, if the super volcano blows up, we're all gone anyway. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Okay, there's uh, one more link I wanted to show you. It's what might be happening down underneath uh, Yellowstone. You have to watch the volcano video. Uh, link down below as well and it'll really show you it, it, it's amazing how it'll show how uh, violent it is underneath the ground so go have a look at that and I think you'll really understand a lot more of what might be happening in Yellowstone let me hear from you and thanks for all your ups and downs and your the new subscribers and we'll talk to you guys later